and this time I'm heading off into Pixelmator. Now, one of the things you need to know before um, I talk about this is that I have installed two specific fonts. What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to make a poster, which is just a fun kind of way of demonstrating your photos, showcasing your images. Works really well with kids. They absolutely love it. So what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to make a poster. Now, there's lots of genres of posters that work really well for this type of example. There's circus posters, concert posters. I've actually gone for a wanted poster. So what I've done is I've got two fonts that work really well for that type of poster. Uh, they're both free. Uh, one is called Nashville and the other is called Wanted Poster. So I'll make sure that there's links for those in the resource pack as well. And I've already pre-installed them. They're just true type fonts. Very, very simple to install. So the fonts are installed. And then I have some um, images that were all free. All the ones I'm using were actually free. So I'm going to start off with some old paper. So I'm going to open this in Pixelmator. It's actually, uh, let me get rid of that one, and you can actually see the paper. Right, this is actually a Photoshop file, so Pixelmator has no problem opening Photoshop files as far as it can go. Uh, when I say as far as it can go, if Pixelmator doesn't understand um, one of the layers or the smart objects or something, then it will ignore it. But for things like masks and stuff like that, it's pretty good when it comes to opening it. So it had no problems with that at all. Now, uh, you can see the interface is um, with Pixelmator quite fragmented. It's all over the place. But what I find useful is to press the F key and it will go full screen. So that's what it looks like full screen. That's a much better way to edit. Now, the only problem with that is as I click away um, to work with it. So as I click on the finder, um, it goes out of full screen view, but I don't have to go back into full screen view. When I click back on the image, it will automatically go back into it. So uh, first thing I need is a picture of uh, somebody who is indeed wanted. And um, I have this one from iStock Photo. So uh, I'm just going to drag and drop that in. Uh, and I need to, I thought you looked like an old cowboy. Uh, what I need to do with that is to transform it because it's far too big. So uh, in Pixelmator, strangely, um, transform is command and T. That makes total sense in Photoshop. In Pixelmator, it's control and F. So don't think the first letter, think the F of transform. And I'm gonna make that about 50%. So I can see uh, more of the image and then I'll scale it down manually after that. So there we go. So back into there and just make that much smaller. So he's in the middle of what's going to be a wanted poster. Now I know what you're thinking. <laughs> the colour's not good at the minute. <laughs> it looks far too modern and um, far too much and hard edges on it, but it, it's all fixable, believe me. Right, I need the colours to match the actual image itself. So let me zoom in so you've got a better view there. All I need to do for that is to change the layer blend mode. Layer blend modes change how the pixels interact with each other. So, for instance, if I have, um, well, I'll, I'll show you, it'll be far easier. Uh, let's say I, want, I choose to darken. What that will do is it will show you the darker pixels. So you can see he's merged, merged in with the paper much better than before, but the colours aren't quite right. Now, there's a lot of layer blend modes, as you can see. The one that works best in this circumstance is luminosity. So I'm going to choose the one right down the bottom. Now, I know you're still thinking, no, that's not great. Well, bear with me because it needs to have a layer mask applied to it and it needs to be much softer around the edges and then it will look like it matches. So I'm going to add a mask to that layer. Now masks cause consternation every time I demonstrate them. All it means is um, if you imagine that you have an image on the bottom layer and you put some acetate over the top of it and then you get a big sharpie pen and you start drawing on the acetate, well where you draw you can't see what is below it and it, that's exactly the same principle. It's incredibly simple. So I'm going to get the brush tool I'm going to get um, my default colours and I am going to make quite a big brush and then go around the edges. And what I'm doing is I'm painting black 
on the mask and where I paint black on the mask it masks it out so you don't see those pixels so it can make it much better in terms of making that look like it belongs on the page so I can be quite brutal with as much of that as I take away there so there we go that looks much more like uh, it belongs on that page now I could take that to the nth degree if I want to but that's that's fine I think that's okay and then I need to put some text on it um, as I say I made so I've added some special fonts so I'm going to go in there actually uh, it has already selected that font but I'm going to choose a different one I want Nashville for um, in fact it's easier to just click show fonts because if I do that I can type it and then it should show me the font itself. So that looks about right. Can you choose that one? Uh, no, you're not going to change for me. Yeah, all right then, be like that. Let me get this in first. Let me get wanted in there. Right. Now you can see why I don't want this font. It's um, far too narrow. So what I do want is Nashville. So I'll go and choose it from this hideously long list. I have far too many fonts installed. There we go. That's what I want. And I'd also like that much bigger. Now one of the things with Pixelmator that annoys me is that if I want it bigger than 72 points, I can't do it from the dialog box. I have got to go into show fonts and I've actually got to type it in down here. So uh, I probably want that easy 300. And then I have to sh close that as well. And then hopefully, no, I don't want you to do that. Oh dear, let's go back there. I want to move this one down. There we go. So perfect font for that. And then down here, um, a reward. Yes, we need a reward. So uh, I shall put that down there. And I shall put in the amount of the reward. Well, let's say 100,000. Now, I do want this to be in the wanted poster font because I've tried the other font and uh, the problem with the Nashville font is that it doesn't have numbers in it. Yes, I know. It has strange symbols in it. So um, there is that. I need to show the font and again, make that much bigger. So let's no. Oh, dear. It's not that. What, what, what happened there was it wasn't selected correctly. So... 100,000. No, you've missed the zero off. Right, need to be over here and I need 300. That's better. And close that down. That's why I don't like the dialog box. It's got a mind of its own. So 100,000 down there. And reward at the bottom. Now, that's probably easier if I duplicate the wanted because it's already got the correct font. So we move down there and change that to say reward so let's move that up a bit there we go and wanted copy that isn't going to say wanted it is shortly going to say reward now you could take as much time as you wanted in terms of making that um, make the text blend in with it you could change blending modes all kinds of things but what i'm going to show you is putting um it's a little bit light and it doesn't have a background and i would like it to have a background so what i need to do is to go and find a background that would be suitable to put it on and i happen to have one uh, a wood texture so i'm going to drag and drop the wood texture into the image now i know that's not good bear with me it's in the wrong place for a start. I also think it's uh, the wrong orientation as well. Now, it needs to go right behind all of these. So it's at the back. Now, at this point, it starts to get messy in terms of, oh dear, I've got to turn lots of these layers on and off and stuff like that. So what I should do, what everybody should do with all of their images is organize them. So I select the ones that make the actual poster and say group. I then have an untitled group and I'm going to call that poster. And now I can turn off just the poster elements. Uh, I could do with putting all of these in there as well. So I'll put those in there. And that means I can just see this background here. Now I could leave it like that. I think it needs to be the other way around though. So uh, I'm going to rotate that round. 
The other problem with this is that you can't actually see too much of it um, because the size of the um, canvas is such that you're only seeing just fractionally wider than the poster. So if I turn the poster back on, oh dear, these are all now in the wrong order. Let's put those to the top. There we go. Uh, you can't see too much of the background. So what I'm going to do is make the canvas a little bit bigger so you can see more of the background. So up to image uh, and down to canvas size. And I'm going to make it wider. It's uh, 1,200 at the moment. I'm going to make that 1,006. And now you've got much more of a background with it. And I can position it so here, uh, let me get hold of that. You can put it where some, so yeah, put that there. So you can actually see the knots in it, in the wood. And let's have a look at that. There we go. Now, still a problem with that, as far as I can see. It's a little bit light. Uh, the poster's not too bad, but the wood is too light. So a quick tip with a background like that. You could, uh, if you were in Photoshop, try fiddling around with it and possibly dodging and burning. Pixelmator 1 does not have dodging and burning, but Pixelmator 2 that's released this summer will have it. In the interim, there's a couple of tricks you can uh, use. One would be to duplicate the layer. Now, if you duplicate two layers and one is on top of the other and it's full of pixels, it makes no difference. You're looking at the top one. You're not looking at the bottom one and the top one together. What you would need to do for, to that is uh, use multiply. Now, if I use multiply, what it will do is it will take the values of the pixels in both the layers and multiply them together. And when you do that, you get a higher number. So it's darker. As you can see, that is much darker. If you want it a little bit darker still, then it's really simple. Do the same again. Just duplicate that one that is already set to multiply. Now, if I turn that one on and off, you can see that's not bad, might need to be a little bit darker, mm, that's a little bit too dark. And well then what you can do is change the opacity of that last layer that you added and you can get a nice contrast between the two. And then turn the poster back on. And one of the last things that I did was make a, a completely new layer that I put, um, you can actually put this in one of two places, you could have it underneath the poster or you could have it above the poster. I'm gonna put it behind the poster at the moment um, and show you why. First of all, I need to choose a brown color. Well, you've got some nice brown tones here. So I've just picked that up with the eyedropper tool. And what I'm now going to do is go and get the brush tool and have a fairly large-ish brush and just paint on it. Now it's going to look odd. Yes, it's going to look odd. But what you can do with that is do what you did with the other one, which is change the blend mode. So at the moment, it doesn't look great, but it's going to look a whole lot better if you change the blend mode. At the moment, it just looks incredibly odd. If I change that blend mode and I change it to multiply, it looks much darker around the edges, but you can still see the detail of what is below it. And what I said about you could have it above the poster or below is that's what it looks like below the poster. But you could also just drag it to the top of the layer stack. And now it is above the poster. And you have your wanted poster.